Now, where on earth have Henrietta and Mary got themselves to? Hmm. Uh, forgive me, Mrs. Musgrave. I left my umbrella. Mom? I can listen no longer in silence. I must speak to you by such means as are within my reach. You pierce my soul. I am half agony, half hope. Tell me not that I am too late. That such precious feelings are gone forever. I offer I myself, myself to you again, again with a heart, heart even, even more, more your own than when you almost broke, broke it eight years and a half ago. ago. Dare not say that man forgets say. sooner than woman, that his love has an earlier I death. Love. I have loved none but you. Unjust, Unjust I, I may have been, been. weak and weak and resentful I have been, been, but never been. inconstant. You alone have brought me to Bath. For you alone, I think and plan. Have you not seen this? Can you fail to have understood my wishes? I had not waited even these ten days could I have read your feelings. I must go, uncertain of my fate. I shall return and follow your party as soon as possible. A word, a word, a look will be enough to decide whether I enter your father's house this evening or never. Charles yeah. liked it. Well, did he? And is something the matter? Look at you. Oh, and I feel a little faint, Mrs. Musgrove. Um, I will go home if I may. What do you mean, my dear? Go home directly and take care of yourself, so you may be fit for this evening. Yes. Charles, go and call a chair. No, no, no. I assure you, Mrs. Musgrove, I am, I am well ab able to walk. Um, good morning. See you this evening. Oh. Charles, I want you to assure Captain Wentworth and Captain Harville that we hope to see them both tonight. It was understood. No, I'm no, sure it was no, understood. I do not think it was understood. They must come, do you hear? You will see them again this morning. Do promise me you will mention it. You will mention it yourself, Frederick. Which way are you going? I hardly know. Are you going near Camden Place? Because if you are, I shall have no scruple in asking you to take Anne's arm to her father's door. She's rather done for this morning, and I do see him eager to be at the gunsmith. He promised me the sight of a capital gun he's just about to send off. A goodie like that double barrel of mine, which she once shot with. I shall have time to take it, Charles. I thank you.